Welcome to church. This is the Stables of the Virtuous Woman. This is a media ministry and we have a church that has no borders, no boundaries. This is Reverend Sylvia Nawa. On this Sunday morning, let's get into the Word of God. Let's see how the Word of God today will encourage us, uplift us, and take us through the week. Today, mostly, I'm going to talk about my experiences. And my experiences, I'm going to read from the book of Philippians, chapter 4. I'll read from verse 1, just so that you get the gist of the story. From verse 1 up to verse 4. Let's get into the word of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let's bring our issues before the Lord. Let's bring our difficulties. Let's bring our praises before the Lord. Let's rejoice before the Lord in the name of Jesus. Philippians 4 from verse 1. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how it should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with you, oh dear, I plead with Saitich to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, I ask you, loyal yet fellow, help these women who have contented at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word which is alive, for your word which is sharper than any two-edged sword. For your word, my Lord and my God, which does not return to your void, but it accomplishes that, every each and every one, that which you purpose for it, that which your children cry out to you, speaking your word, standing on your word, you accomplish it, Lord. Father, we thank you that even in this moment, you are with us as I speak your word, mighty God. Let me hear direct from you. I come with humility that I hear direct from your heart and speak to your people in the name of Jesus. Bless each and everyone that is listening. And Father God, meet them at their point of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Like I have said, I'm just going to share something that has been on my heart. And this is something that I experienced. I was just beginning in ministry and the Lord had sent me from Zambia and sent me all the way to Swaziland. It was not an easy time. It was a confusing time for me because I didn't know the Lord, the depth of how the Lord speaks and everything. And I was just following what his instructions were. To many, it looked like I was making a mistake. Sometimes I would even think, hmm, Am I doing the right thing? But I mean, the, the conviction from the Holy Spirit was so much that I just followed what the Lord was telling me. So on this day, I was actually stranded, very, very stranded. And I was with my children. And as I sat there, I tried to reach my sister in Zambia. I was stranded being in Switzerland, not knowing anybody there. And I tried to reach my sister. Because at this point, I was just thinking, well, if the Lord is not coming through for me today, then I'm just going to make arrangements and go back home. Because now, what am I going to do? My children were there. We didn't have any food. We didn't have any accommodation. I was in this place uh, where they used to have conferences. I was in Baban. And I was in this place where they used to have conferences. Somebody had just left me there. So I, 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 the first night they paid for us, but this, by the second night, I didn't have not even a 20 emalangen, which they wanted, which is 20 rand, which they wanted to pay for the room. I didn't have it. I didn't have food. I didn't have any money. The only money that I had on me were three coins, three rand. That's what I had on me. So on that day, I woke up. I sat. I prayed. And it's like the Lord was not hearing me at all. My children were running around and praying. I was drawing strength from them. And I was just sitting and listening to hear what the Lord was going to say. Sometime in the afternoon, I called my sister on a payphone. I called, 
And um, I think I spoke to her, or maybe on that day I didn't speak to her. I was totally, totally stranded. I didn't know what to do. I didn't speak to her on that day. And, uh, and she was in Lusaka, and I was in Swaziland, in Baban. So by the evening, the whole day we hadn't eaten, but the people there were kind enough to give my youngest child something to eat. So by the evening, I was now thinking, so where am I going to sleep? And I was sitting, we were just sitting under a tree with my children on a bench under a tree with our bags there packed. And I kept telling them, don't worry, the Lord is going to come through for us. I had no idea what was going to happen. My youngest was a baby. And at some point, around 18 hours, it started showering. So now the girls just ran in where, into the reception. And I stood there. And the girls were now running around with the bags, taking them to the reception. I just stood there with my Bible. I put my baby on my back and strapped her tight. And she was just hiding from the rain. And I, I got my Bible and I put it on the I put it on the table just where we were sitting. It was outside and it was showering. And there came a wind. There came a wind which blew. I had opened my Bible, but it it blew and opened my Bible up to Philippians chapter 4 and it just stopped there. So I looked at the Bible and I thought, ah, why is it stopping here? So I thought, let me read. Then I got into Philippians 4. And when I get, go to verse 4, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I didn't feel at that moment that the Lord was near me. I did not at all. But I read the scripture again. Rejoice in the Lord. And I'll say it again. Rejoice. I said, Lord, right now there's nothing to rejoice for. The whole day my children haven't eaten. I don't know where they're going to eat. How am I rejoicing? I just stood there. I was quiet. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. I said, Lord, you are not near because I'm not feeling you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition. I said, Lord, but I've prayed. I've petitioned. I have said, Lord, I thank you. I don't know what else to do now. And I just kept quiet. At that point, I just kept quiet. And a few minutes later, the man who was in charge of there, the one who was at the reception and the overall in charge of the kitchen and, and the rooms, he came to me and he said to me, Maggie, <coughs> that's what they say in Swaziland when they say mom, or when they say mommy. Here in Zambia, we say mommy. <laughs> or when they say mommy. So he said, Maggie, come inside. So I followed him. I just picked my Bible and my handbag and I followed him. Because the kids had, my girls had already moved the bags. So I, I sat there at the reception. And then he called his boss. And he said, there's a lady here who, here who has three children. But he, since she has no food, she has no money to pay for the room. She was in the room, but she has no money to pay for the room. And she hasn't eaten with her children the whole day that they have just been here. So fortunately, the, 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 the Lord now was at work. At that point, I didn't know what was happening. So the man, the, the boss of that man said, keep her there, give her back her room, feed her. Keep her there. Tomorrow when I come to work, I'll talk to her. So that's how he told me, go back to your room and go to the dining and eat. I saw the hand of God. We went back to our room. I ate with my children. And my children said, Mommy, God has answered our prayer. And I said, yes, he has answered our prayer. And after that, we prayed again. The following day, that man came to, to speak to me. And he just said to me, I understand what you are going through. And I promise you that I will keep you here. If I have to pay from my pocket, I'll pay for you. I'll keep you here until you have somewhere to go. And I said, thank you. Thank you. 
That morning when I was praying, I, I saw a vision. The Lord showed me that somebody was going to come, but I didn't know who, who it was. So I, I just kept thanking God because at least now I knew that my children would eat and have somewhere to sleep. While that was going on, my eldest child that I was with, my eldest daughter, was actually going to school. So you can imagine in the midst of all that, she would wake up in the morning and go to school and come back. So she went to school. When she came back, by afternoon, a colleague, a friend who I had met through the church, came through. She was asking, where is this lady? Where is this lady? And somebody told her that, ah, no, she was left at Tokoza uh, Conference Center. So that person, that lady followed me. I just saw her coming through and she said, Sylvia, I'm looking for you. I said, oh, well, I'm here. And she says, ah, what's going on? So I explained to her. And she says, no, there's a man in church who has a house. Actually, he's been looking for somebody to sit in that house so that it's not vandalized. He hasn't moved in it yet. He's looking for a caretaker. So maybe you could go and live in that house. I said, ah, yes, if the man is agreeable, I can go and live there. So she ran around and made that arrangement, and the man agreed. And the same day, I didn't sleep in that place again. I saw the hand of God. I didn't sleep in that place again. She came to pick me up by evening. I went back to that man and explained to him what had happened. And he said, you see, the God whom we serve, he is so faithful. Mom, you are a very faithful woman. May God bless you. He blessed me and I left. My friend took me to that house. Needless to say, we didn't even have blankets. <laughs> we didn't even have blankets. She brought me one blanket and she bought us some food for the evening. And we went to stay in that house. And it was a very nice house in a very beautiful residential area. <laughs> what God can do. What am I saying? When the Bible tell that, tells us to rejoice and always to rejoice, I know I'm speaking to somebody because the Lord has led me today to share this message. He's been speaking to me that I should share this testimony, but I've kind of been dilly-dallying. So today it was so heavily impressed upon me and I know I'm talking to somebody. I'm encouraging somebody today. You may be feeling that the Lord is not anywhere near you, but he is right there. He is right there. I went through that. And what I was feeling was that God was not near me, was that God was not hearing me, but he was hearing me. He was hearing me. I stood there and the Lord came through for me and my children. We saw the hand of God. We didn't sleep outside. I may have stayed the whole day without eating. It was okay. It was a fast. I was praying. I needed answers from God. So you may be feeling like that. But when the word of God is telling you rejoice, and again I say rejoice, you are not feeling it but just rejoice. Because the Lord is very near you. And even your answer is just next to you. All you need to do is just keep believing and trusting him. Keep believing and trusting him. In all that turmoil, in all that was happening to me and my children, I believed God because I said, Lord, I know you are the one who brought me here. I heard you clearly. And since I came, you have provided for me. And even now, I don't think you failed to provide for me. It was not an easy thing, but I followed that instruction and I prayed that prayer. Rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. Twice, he says, rejoice. First of all, he says, rejoice in the Lord. Always. Always. What does always mean? Always means regardless of the situation that you are in. Feeling trapped. Feeling helpless. Feeling hopeless. Feeling afraid. Being so scared. But trust in the Lord. Because anytime, anywhere, the Lord will perform a miracle. He's a miracle working God. And he continues to say, let your gentleness be evident. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. You may feel the anxiety. See, the good thing about the Lord is you may feel the anxiety. You even tell him, Lord, I'm feeling very anxious here. 
Even when you are telling me that I should not be anxious, I'm feeling very anxious, but I'm praying. You see, I like it when it says with thanksgiving. And then he says in verse 7, and the peace of God. In verse 7 he says, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. You are feeling anxious and you can tell the Lord, Lord, I'm feeling very anxious. But as you continue to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I know that you are near me and that you are doing something for you, for me. What happens? His peace, because God is peace. You are calling upon him. And in the moment that you are anxious, what you need is the peace of God. And he is Jehovah Shalom. He is the peace that transcends all understanding. A peace will come upon you, which you cannot even understand. You can't even explain it. You can't even explain it. It will guard your mind. It will guard your heart. In short, it will guard your soul. Because when it guards your soul, it stops you. Your soul is the one that it has senses. It's the one that is emotional. It's the one that reacts. So when the Spirit of the Lord now is guarding your heart, and it's guarding your mind, and it's giving you that peace which you cannot even understand, it's stopping you from doing something that you may later regret. That is what the peace of God does, guarding your heart and guarding your mind, transcending all understanding. You can't understand it. You are in the midst of that turmoil. You are in the midst where you are so fearful by the peace of God because he is Jehovah Shalom. And God always promises us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When he says, do not be anxious, don't be anxious because he is just next to you. He's just next to you. I know I'm speaking to somebody, but the Lord is speaking to you today and uplifting you, lifting you out of that turmoil. You are so fearful. Oh, may the peace of the Lord that transcends all understanding be upon you right now in the name of Jesus. You are so anxious. May the peace of the Lord take away that anxiety right now in the name of Jesus and guard your heart and your mind. May hope return. May you be uplifted. May your spirit be uplifted that the anxiety will go, that the fear will go. I speak to that fear and I command it to live right now in the name of Jesus. Fear you will live because this peace of the Lord that transcends understanding is coming on the child of the Lord. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I went through that. So I'm speaking from my heart. When that happened, I was given a home to live in. And my children said, Mommy, you said that you had seen somebody coming. Ha, ah, it was that lady who came. I said, yes. The Lord sends an angel all the time. Maybe an angel that you know. It could be an angel that you don't even know. But he will send an angel. And for me, he sent that lady. Wherever she was, she had God. Wherever she was, God moved her. Do not be anxious because God is moving an angel for you right now to come and intervene in your situation, to come and rescue you out of that situation. God is very faithful. God is faithful. When he says, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, he means just that. And you see the goodness with the word of God. It does not return to God void. It's only because we as human, we become limited. And our thinking, sometimes our thoughts run away with us, with the way we feel. That's why the peace of God guards our minds and our hearts. So that our feelings do not just run away with what? And then we fail to focus on the Lord. He's saying rejoice. He's saying do not be anxious. He says do not lean on your own understanding. But by prayer and petition, present your requests to God. I've already, I ministered on the prayer, the petition, and the thanksgiving. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. When you go to the book of Proverbs, I was in another situation. <laughs> I was in another situation. And this time I sent my daughter abroad. She was in China and she was studying medicine. And I said, Lord, as yes, she was going, I said, Lord, I'm praying this prayer. I said, Lord, I need a scripture that I will stand on for all the six years that she will be in China. I need a scripture that I'll stand on. 
Because you are God. Whatever that you will need to be provided there, I will not be able to provide them. But I know that you are my Jehovah Jireh and you are the God who meets my every need. And my prayer is that from the onset, Lord, I'm trusting you. That by faith, I'm going to move. That we are will start in faith, we will stay in faith, and we'll finish in faith. And I told my daughter, we prayed that prayer together. And I told her, every time you feel anxious, go back to that scripture and read it. It's in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. And the Bible reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Trust in the Lord always. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And every time I felt a bit anxious about maybe school fees, maybe her needs, maybe that, this and that, I just said, Lord, I'm trusting in you always. And I go back to Philippians 4, 4, 4, verse 3. And I say, and I'm rejoicing in you and I refuse to be anxious. Because I know your peace that transcends all and to guard my mind and to guard my heart. And I was praying this prayer, this verse. We stood on this word with my daughter. The six years that she was there. There were challenges, financial challenges. But the Lord came through for us. And we stood on this scripture. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In everything you do, acknowledge him. And he will make your paths straight. And I would say, Lord, you have promised that you will make our paths straight. Straighten even this one. It looks like this one is taking us somewhere else. We have no money for her fees. Straighten this path, Lord, and provide for you are our Jehovah Jireh. And miraculously, the Lord, we, we, we went through that by faith. And every day I was talking to my daughter, I would tell her, that we are trusting the Lord. Don't forget Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And she says, no, mama, I will not forget it. We prayed that prayer until today. We prayed that prayer until she graduated. When the Lord tells us rejoice in the Lord, when he says he is near, he is indeed near. When he tells us do not be anxious about anything, don't be anxious. Because God is in control. When he says in, trust in the Lord in all, with, in, with all your heart, with everything that is in you, the word of God knows what to do. The word of God will not return to God for it. That which you speak to, to the Lord, he is going to do. If it's healing that you are needing, if it's healing that you are needing, and the Bible is telling you in James 4, he's saying that you call the elders to lay their hands on you. If there's no elder to lay their hand on you, you take your own hand, your right hand, you lay it where it is paining, and you pray. The, the Bible says, the, the fervent prayer of a faithful man availeth much. God answers that prayer. You are the man that is faithful. You pray for yourself. And God will hear your prayer. Anyone that is anxious about anything regardless, the word of God says it will not return void. It is the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. He is God. He is the word. So when you speak, you are speaking Jesus. You are speaking Jesus, the one who died for us to atone for our sins. That is the one that you are speaking. You are calling him and you are calling all that power that comes with Jesus. The resurrection power. He is the life and the resurrection. Anywhere where there's no life, he puts life. Anywhere where there's a deficiency, he puts the deficiency. He, he replenishes the deficiency. He is the life. In any situation, he brings life. Father, I pray for your people today in the mighty name of Jesus. That whoever is anxious, whoever is feeling helpless, whoever is afraid, whoever is thinking that the Lord is not near them, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Make yourself be felt by them. Let them feel you, Lord. Manifest yourself that they'll feel you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, meet their need. Touch them. Restore them. Heal them. Let them feel. Let them experience that the word of God is alive and that it is active and that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. You came through for me that day. 
I have spoken this testimony. May it bless somebody. May somebody go and share it with somebody so that it will bless and encourage somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. You have heard the word and if you haven't had a chance to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, to be in the family of the Lord, pray this prayer. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are the word. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died for us on the cross of Calvary, that we may be redeemed. Thank you for atoning for my sins. Today, I promise I repent. I want to be in your family, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Congratulations. With that, you are in the family of God. You are with Father Abraham now in the name of Jesus. Continue. Find a church. Find a church, a Bible teaching church, and continue to follow us on our podcasts. Wherever you are, whatever time you can access this word, this word will speak to you. This word will encourage you. This word will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Till next time. This has been Reverend Sylvia now from the stables of the uh, virtuous woman. It is shalom and bye-bye. God bless you.